if there are no challenges in the game, would it still be fun? If the final boss can be defeated within just a minute, would that still be fun? You'd probably be like, okay, well, I finished that, what next? Because we like to be stimulated. A part of us actually like challenges. And so when we face challenges, don't think of it as, oh my gosh, war's enemy. Like why do shit keep on happening in my life? Like, don't think of it like that. Think of it like, wow, this is exciting. This is another level for me to unlock. This is another boss that I get to fight, right? Welcome to the Early Retirement Advantage podcast, where you will get weekly doses of inspiration to pursue financial freedom while caring for your mental health. After being diagnosed with several mental illnesses during the pandemic and getting fired soon after that, I decided to turn that into an opportunity to pursue FIRE, financial independent and retire early. If you're ready to kickstart your financial freedom journey while taking care of your mental health, you've come to the right place. You will learn the mindset and strategies to retire early from anything that no longer serves you. So if you know me in person, you probably know that I'm a pretty introspective person and I always like to dig deeper and find the hidden meaning of things of life. And recently, this is what I think life really is. I think life is a giant video game. And within this giant video game, there are mini games within this giant video game. And you can choose to play the mini games. Different people can be good at different mini games. And if you excel at these mini games, you get to also excel in your overall giant video game. So another way to explain this is kind of like escape rooms. So in order for you to successfully get out of this escape room, there are certain steps that you need to take. And each step is like a mini game because there are different clues and you have to solve for different clues. And after you successfully solve for these clues, you can get out. And the more I think about it, the more I think, yeah, like this analogy does work because when you're in an escape room, you also work with other people to solve clues. So you partner up with people who are good at different things. So you guys can help each other out and eventually get out of the escape room. And I think this also ties back with my discussion with hubby the other day about the whole like predestination or you know destination versus free will like how much of life is destination how much of life is free will and the more i think about it the more i feel like it's a combination of both there is a part that is predetermined for example if you're in an escape room the escape route is pretty much predetermined but how you solve the clues how long you take to solve the clues um what conversations you have with the people on your team who solves what clue that is not determined so the process is not determined, but the end is always the same. Like eventually you get out. You either let yourself out by solving all the games, all the, I guess, mysteries. You either do that or you wait until time's up and you get let out of the game. So either way you win, either way you get out eventually, but it is more about the process the process of playing the game that um, really differs, that really changes. And I think when you think about life with this lens, with this perspective, you get to take things easier. You get to relax more and you get to really enjoy the show. You get to really find joy in even the challenges and the problems of life. And one phrase I really like is, life is gonna life and your brain is gonna brain. Life is always going to come up with some shit that you have to deal with. There is no perfect life in the world. And, you know, when I was broke, when I was like a broke college student, when I was just starting work uh, at my big four accounting job making $59,000, I look at richer people and I think that rich people must have no problems. Millionaires must have zero problems because they have money and money solves everything. But it wasn't until I actually became a millionaire myself when I realized that it is not true. Millionaires have problems too. They just have different problems. At every single stage of your life, you run into different sets of problems, just different stage problems. Just like if you are in kindergarten, you probably have problems. When you are in middle school, you have problems. When you are in college, you also have a different set of problems. And life is just about problem solving. It's just about solving these mysteries with the clues you have on hand, with the people you choose who are part of your life, who are part of your team. And um, where was I going with this? 
Uh, yeah, so being rich does not solve everything. And brain is also going to be brain, which means your nervous system is not perfect. Your subconscious mind is not perfect. The older you get, usually the more trauma filled you are, the more bad shit has happened to you in the past, which means you get triggered more, which means more things upset you, which means you maybe have more fears because you have more things to lose. And I think these are just totally normal things. Don't expect your brain to be just perfect. Like I think a lot of people in the money space, they make the mistake of treating themselves like a robot. And they're like, okay, I know that in order to be wealthy, in order to achieve financial freedom, I just need to make more. I just need to save more. I just need to invest more. And they think it's very easy. And so they try to do it. But a lot of people don't end up actually doing what is the right way because brain is going to brain and we are human beings and we are just intrinsically flawed beings. <laughs> we can't just expect ourselves to execute on every single command. That is a freaking PC. <laughs> that is not a human being. And um, you also have to think about your brain as it is not just all surface level stuff. Like not everything is conscious. You can be dealing with a lot of subconscious shit that you don't even realize because all of these things are in the undercurrents. They're underneath the surface. This could be because of your past trauma. This could be because of your childhood. This could be because of what you've witnessed as a child or the stories that you've heard about your ancestors, about the previous generations. This can be generational trauma. This could be many things. This can even be past lives if you believe in that. And so I think it's super naive to expect your brain to be perfect because there are so many variables. There are so many nuances within just your brain being brain. And you know, a part of early retirement, a part of personal finance is to work with yourself, not against yourself, and to not get mad at yourself just because you're not perfect. And to actually, in a way, like you want to actually be okay with the imperfection. You have to accept the imperfection and even celebrate it a little bit. And whenever you catch yourself and your brain being brain, I think it is actually quite funny if you can just like catch yourself and be like, hey, this is my brain being brain. And this is totally normal. There's nothing wrong with me. This just proves that I am a normal human being. And I think this kind of mindset kind of lightens up everything. And it also helps us become less hard on ourselves. And remember, like life is just a giant video game. Things are not that serious. All the things that used to bother you so much as a kid, most of it probably doesn't bother you anymore. And maybe looking back, you're like, why the frick was I so caught up with the minor details? Because in the big picture, all these minor details don't mean shit. I am fine. I am a grown ass adult. I turned out okay. Sure, shit has happened to me in the past, but they did not break me. I am still a complete freaking human being. I'm so able to live, breathe, thrive in life, listen to this podcast and just enjoy the, the fun parts of life because life is a video game after all. And of course, some parts of it are fun and other parts of it that are challenging, that can be fun too because just imagine this. If you are, if you are playing a video game and it's just like so freaking easy, and you just solve everything in like a split second, would that video game still be fun? If there are no challenges in the game, would it still be fun? If the final boss can be defeated within just a minute, would that still be fun? You'd probably be like, okay, well, I finished that, what next? Because we like to be stimulated. A part of us actually like challenges. And so when we face challenges, don't think of it as, oh my gosh, worst enemy. Like why do shit keep on happening in my life? Like, don't think of it like that. Think of it like, wow, this is exciting. This is another level for me to unlock. This is another boss that I get to fight, right? Another mindset is it's not that I have to, but I get to, I get to go to work. I get to retire early. I get to listen to this podcast. I get to work out. I get to take a hot shower. I get to talk to my spouse. I get to call my parents, right? Like all these things, once you change the I have to, to I get to, it just sounds different. And it sounds so much more uplifting. And same thing with thinking of life like a video game. Like, is this scientifically proven? No, but do I care? Also no. I am just sharing my perspective with you. And I hope that maybe this perspective can 
help you view life in a more fun way. And an another thing that I've been exploring is that there is no point of finding out the truth. I think we've always been taught that there is one right answer, especially for those of you who have grown up in China or in Asia in general. I think the education there is that there is always one correct answer and your job is to answer the correct answer on the exam. And your answer cannot deviate from the correct answer or else you're wrong and you are gonna end up with a really low score. You're gonna end up failing the class or the exam. And so, you know, I was also taught that way growing up and so, now, as an adult, a lot of times I tend to think that there is one right answer and I have to find the truth until recently I am trained in RT. I'm trained with RT, rapid resolution therapy. And a concept really stood out to me, which is there is no right answer. There is no truth. There are so many people literally killing each other over what is the truth, like religions killing each other. Uh, different beliefs, like people with different belief systems, different backgrounds, different countries fighting each other for the truth. But in the end, is it really that important to find the truth? What if there is no one single truth that is the universal truth for everyone? And some truths are just not that important. And instead of trying to find the truth, can't we just find our truth? that is useful to us, that works for us, and this truth can be different from time to time. For example, when I was younger, the truth that really served me was corporate is the only way out. I have to work hard at my job. I have to go to work every single day, do my very best to earn my place in the workplace. And you know what? That truth really worked for me because that helped me get a job in Big Four Accounting as a fucking international student who is depending on a work visa to stay in the country. And that was the truth that worked for me at the time. But now things have changed. My mental health is not designed for the corporate world. And I prioritize my mental health over anything else. Like my health is priority. My health is number one. And so my truth has then shifted into, it is not the most important thing for me to do well at work. Heck, I don't even want to go to work at all. <laughs> I don't want a job at all. And I'd rather prioritize stable mental health over stable paycheck and work visa also is not a thing anymore. And so a lot of things can shift, a lot of truths can emerge and you don't necessarily need to follow the same truth for your entire life. The truth is fluid and there is no such thing as one universal truth for everyone for a lot of things, for most things. And sure, stuff like gravity, yes, there's like the law of gravity. And as far as I know, everyone on earth kind of has the same gravity for most places, except for, I guess, high mountains. I haven't done my research on that, but you get what I mean. Like, sure, there are things like gravity. That is the universal truth for everyone. But for other things in life, it is not that important for you to find out or for you to really obsess over if this is really the truth for everyone. You just need to think, is this a truth that is useful for me? Is this my truth? And whenever I talk about personal finance, whenever I talk about money, whenever I talk about my mental health, I always preface it with, this is just my perspective. This is just my lens. And this is not the truth for everyone. So kind of think of your truth, kind of like your prescription, like your glasses. Like, sure, your glasses probably help you see more clearly. That's why it's useful for you. But not everyone has your prescription. And so if you give your glasses to someone else who has a different prescription, they're not going to see as clearly. They're not going to see the same stuff. You know, a prescription that really works for you, your pair of glasses that really work for you might make someone else's vision hella blurry. And there's nothing wrong with you and there's nothing wrong with your glasses. It just means you have a different perspective. Yeah, you have a different lens. You have a different truth and that is fine. And I just hope that we can stop focusing on things that don't matter. And for me, one of the things that don't matter is trying to figure out what is the universal truth? Because to me, that is pretty useless. That is a waste of time, a waste of energy. And I'd rather spend my time doing more important things such as you know just hanging out with my friends and family, um, just chilling, just reading, <laughs> just learning. There are so many things that I'd rather be doing than just, uh, trying to find the universal truth because that to me is pointless and it causes a lot of unnecessary fights, dramas, and even murders. And 
I just don't think that is what I care about. I don't want to fight with anyone over one universal truth. And um, that is, I guess, my perspective on life and truth and early retirement in general. And I hope that this has brought you maybe some insight into your own life and some perspective and uh, maybe some inspiration. So let me know what are your thoughts. I am on IG at cherrytongue.co. So feel free to DM me and let's start a chat. You know, let's um, chat about life, about early retirement, about how you're doing. Share this episode with anyone you think can benefit from it. Thank you so much for tuning in and don't forget to subscribe. If you absolutely loved what you heard today, be sure to share it with me by leaving a review or taking a screenshot of this episode, tagging me at cherrytongue.co and sharing it on Instagram where I'm most active. I can't wait to connect with you. In the meantime, go out there and seek your freedom.